Hey guys, Alex with Bay Cities Construction here, and this is another episode of the Bay Cities Construction Show. If this is the first time on our channel, please like and subscribe. This channel is 100% dedicated for you to learn more about your next construction project. We have videos on here about kitchen bathroom models, home additions, doing plans, all that type of stuff. And today we're talking about pulling permits in Orange County. So if you have a house here in Orange County and you're considering doing a major project, we're going to walk through the process of pulling your permits. So this is episode 51, and uh, we're going to be talking about why you need permits, and we're also going to be covering a little Q&A, some commonly asked questions that people have about pulling permits and uh, why they should do it, et cetera, why it's important. And uh, we're super stoked about shooting the video tonight from our offices here in Orange County. We're in Newport Beach. We have a, a really nice little uh, temp office that we've been here for, for a while now. And uh, we're going to start shooting some videos down here because we have more business down here. And uh, looking forward to meeting with more people at our offices in Newport Beach. So, hey, if you're down here in Orange County you want to book a, an appointment, let's do that. Anyway, let's talk about our, our um, topic tonight, which is pulling permits in Orange County. And uh, let's get into it, guys. So our first city is Huntington Beach. So Huntington Beach, pretty late, uh, you know, surf city, USA. And uh, they do have over-the-counter permits available. Um, obviously, if it's a small job, you'll be able to get over-the-counter permits. If you're going to do a full big job, a home addition, stuff with structural implications, removing a wall inside, etc., you're going to need a full set of plans. And we'll get into what that is uh, in a bit here. If you're in, in our town here in Newport Beach, um, you'll need a full set of plans and it'll be a full submittal process. So it'll take uh, probably three to four weeks to have the plans reviewed. Uh, you'll have to have a site plan, a proposed um, site plan, existing floor plan, and also a proposed floor plan. So the proposed is basically the changes that you want to make. What's the addition going to look like? Where's the wall you're removing, etc. In the city of Irvine, it's a um, full submittal, which means you have to have a full set of plans, no over-the-counter permits. For Laguna Beach, you'll have to have um, full submittal. So no express permits, no over-the-counter permits. Now, by the way, you should not be confused with um, some of these cities, all of the cities, if you only need an electrical permit or you only need a plumbing permit, if you're doing a repair, you don't need a full set of plan for that. But if you're remodeling the bathroom or the kitchen, you're going to need a full set of plans. And that, that's what we're talking about here. So the, there's a distinction because some cities don't require you to get a full set of plans if you're not removing any of the perimeter walls of the area to be remodeled, right? So if you're doing a kitchen remodel and you're not removing a load-bearing wall, then you don't need uh, structurals in, in some of the cities. But in the cities that we identify as full submittal, whether you're removing a load-bearing wall or not, those cities require a full set of plans. So that's that's what we mean when we say, um, f you know, full submittal required. And Laguna Woods, you will need a full set of plans. In Laguna Hills, there are some over-the-counter permits available for um, minor remodels. And again, if you're doing a major remodel, you'll have to get a full set of uh, structurals and all that good stuff. Aliso Viejo does offer some over-the-counter uh, permits along with the full set. Dana Point requires a full set and actually we're doing a project in Dana Point. The uh, folks there at the building safety office are super nice. So a little shout out to the the plan checkers at uh, the Dana Point Building Safety Department. Thanks very much for helping us through it. I know it's a challenging time right now with COVID protocol and by the way if you want to see some videos on the progress of that project in Dana Point please uh, check them out. Brian will put some links below so you can check them out. We've got some really cool video. We actually did a gut remodel up there, so there's a lot lot to see. San Juan Capistrano. You'll need a full set of plans there. And uh, super cool little town. Look forward to doing more business down there. Now, for the unincorporated communities, that means um, cities that don't have their own uh, dedicated like uh, city hall, Sir. Coto de Casa, Ladera Ranch, Portola Hills, San Joaquin Hills, Via Park. All of their construction is processed through the OC um, or the Orange County Public Works. So the and that, that'll be a full submittal for, for any of the changes there. So so that's how they're handling it. There's some areas in unincorporated Los Angeles that, that are the same way, like in Lomita. You have to go through LA City, Rolling Hills if you're up in Orange in LA County. 
So it's very normal, some of the unincorporated cities that the county will handle the uh, planning and building permits. So, all right, so let's let's talk about the question of why you need permits. What's the benefit of it? Why why should you pull permits? Permits can be expensive. So let's let's talk about some some bullet points. First of all, the the main one is it's the law, right? So if you start doing major major work on your house and you don't have permits and a building inspector comes by to check on an inspection on something else happening in your you know down the street from your house, they can technically um, stop construction at your place. And that can be, along with being a bit embarrassing, it can be problematic depending on where where they stop you. So I think that if you have a major project, it's definitely um, a good practice to pull the building permits, to get, to get plans done and, and do a building permits the right way. So overall, um, having permits and, and meeting the guidelines of the city or the municipality or the county impl- improves public safety because there is a, a set standard, a minimum performance standard for the buildings. So if you have a reputable engineer and your plans are, are um, inspected and, and um, approved by the city and then later inspected once they were built by a building inspector, it improves the safety. You know, you have a, a, a standard uh, by a recognized body uh, for building performance. So you have the peace of mind. Uh, also, you're minimizing your financial risk because sometimes when things are built that are not up to code, um, you could be required to knock it down, right? So that would be bad. And then liability protection. If you ever sell the house um, and you you pass along the building permits that are approved and stuff, you have something that um, shows that the work that was done was done to a good standard and uh, protects your, your liability. So uh, it also protects the value of your house. So those are some, some very, very basic uh, reasons to get a permit. And uh, just know that... It'll be the responsibility of your contractor if you hire the wrong contract. The wrong contractor may not want to pull permits, but the right contractor will handle all of that stuff for you and make sure that your, you know, your project is not only built correctly, but it complies with the, with the local laws. So, Brian, this is the time we're talking about some questions. Do we have any questions to drill down on? Wait a minute. It's time to drill down on some questions. All right, Brian, what do we got? We got any questions? So somebody wants to know, are permit fees and plan check fees the same thing? It's a good question. It's a very common question. The, no, they're not. So there's a two, two phases of paying for your, your city or your municipal fees. The plan check fees are what the um, municipality or the county charges to review your plans. When they issue a permit for the work to begin, that's a secondary set of fees. So it's, it's kind of a two-part um, two part schedule. So if you were to doing, and then, you know, kind of people want to know like what, well, how much do things cost, right? Um, I guess I could kind of get into that a little bit. Uh, for bathroom remodeling, the plan check fees are typically uh, about $1,000 to $1,500. And, and that's if it's kind of over the counter. If you have the plans uh, reviewed and approved, you may spend $800 on that and then another eight or $900 on the actual building permits. For, for a small bathroom remodel. For a home, a major home remodel where you have maybe 10, 12 pages of uh, plans, maybe even 15 pages of plans, you could expect to pay maybe $8,000, $10,000 in plan check fees and then another five or 6,000 in building permits. So $15,000 is very plausible uh, to spend between planning and plan check fees for a major home remodel, a home addition or a major home remodel. Somebody else wants to know, do they really need lead and asbestos testing? So, yes, by by state law, by state law, it's re- we're required to have uh, testing before we do the demo. So we basically send out a, a contractor out there that's certified to take the samples, and they'll take samples from different surfaces and have them tested for asbestos and lead. And then that way, if, um, if there anything does test positive, you don't contaminate the rest of the house with the asbestos or the lead. That's the idea that you'll do a mini demo in the sections that lead or asbestos were found. And then when you do the major uh, demolition, you're not contaminating you know, areas that you're not gonna be in with, with the particles. Another viewer wants to know, do you or any other contractors include permit fees in your contract? 
I can't speak for other contractors, but we never incorporate the permit fees because we don't know what they are. So it's a pass-through expense. So I just basically pay for the fees and uh, the customer reimburses me for them. So or, or in other cases, the, contra- the, the client can make a check out to the city, the municipality, and leave it blank, and I'll fill it in, take a picture of it, send it to them, along with the, um, the receipt, and um, that way the, the customer knows what the plan check fees are. In some cases, they can give us kind of like a rough quote, like Redondo Beach will, will do that. Once they have all of the plans looked at, they don't know the totality of what they're going to review. They'll give us like an estimated plan, plan check fee schedule. Somebody wants to know, can I or should I hire a contractor with owner builder permits? Well, I, I don't know if you should or shouldn't, but you understand that whoever pulls the permits is responsible for that. There's, there's, um, it makes it difficult to hold people accountable um, if, if the contractor doesn't pull the permit. So some people try and do that when they, when they play like owner builder, they'll hire the plumber or framer, they'll, they'll play the role of the general contractor. So um, there are some positives and there's definitely some negatives to that. Somebody, I think they're doing some research into uh, like a bathroom remodel. They want to know, can I do the sketches of the floor plans myself? We have had people ask us for that. So there's a minimum kind of a standard, like the way that that um, construction drawings are drawn out, there's a template, right, of, of the components of it, and it has to meet that standard. So most of the time when they ask for a full set, it's not going to be, they're not going to accept the hand sketch. Um, some of the, maybe four or five years ago, some of the cities would accept a hand, she- a hand sketch uh, floor plan of the existing and then a proposed, but most municipalities don't accept that at- anymore. So you have to get a full set, unfortunately. Somebody else would like to know, what happens if I already demoed without permits? Well, the demoing without permits is, is um, only problematic if you haven't done the testing. Because you're supposed to do the testing for lead and asbestos before you do the permitting, before you do the demo. So I- ideally, you you must do the testing first and then whatever specialized demo to remove any lead or asbestos, and then you can do the full demo. The The problem is that you won't be able to get, you won't be ready for an inspection until you, like, you, you can't order an inspection if you don't have permits pulled on the place. So you could do the demo and then be, um, completely demolished and it may take another two or three weeks or four weeks to get approved. So you don't want to do that because you're going to lose use of the building or the house. So that's, you know, something to be coordinated correctly. Somebody else wants to know, are permit fees more expensive here in Orange County? I think that the building permit fees in Orange County are pretty comparable to other Orange County cities. Um, maybe they're, they're more... I mean, in other words, there could be a discrepancy in there. I mean, honestly, it just doesn't matter. You got to pay the fees. So wh- whatever they end up being, um, you're going to have to deal with. I think if people want to complain about the fees or, or push back, um, that's definitely a conversation to have with your elected officials because the the elected officials eventually approve the fee schedules that the uh, bureaucracies come up with. But that's definitely nothing that we can control at, the, at our level. Somebody else wants to know, my uncle is a contractor. Should I hire him? Is that a good idea? We've had that where, where people talk about like their uncle or their brother or some other family member. Hey, look, if you get along well with them and you don't feel that your relationship's going to be put in jeopardy, um, you know, go for it. If you feel like, you know, that that may be a problem, then, then don't. So, you know, I've done work for friends of mine and I've done, and, and, other friends of mine, I refuse to do work. So it just depends on, it's a risk. Look, honestly, it's just a risk. You you may walk away on friendly terms. You may walk away and, and never talk to each other again. So it's hard to say. All right, we got one last question here, and, th- and this one is a doozy. Uh, they say, I erroneously hired an unlicensed contractor, and they abandoned my project. What are my options? Well, the, the, the danger with hiring an unlicensed contractor is that there's, there's practically no recourse because you can't go after their license. You can't, can't go after a performance bond because they don't have it. Um, they don't have any insurance. So if they break something, damage something, somebody gets hurt, 
uh, that they brought on board, you, they're not liable. It's very hard to get them. Um, you'd have to try and maybe sue them personally, you know, maybe. So those are all the the risks that you take when, when you hire somebody that doesn't have a license. And then the other part of it is too, is if you're a worker and you're hi- and you're contracting work without a license, if the people don't pay you, you, there's no recourse. They can't, they can't, you can't sue a customer when you're unlicensed for not paying because you're not supposed to be doing the work in the first place. So anyhow, the working without a license is, is, is a problem. Uh, there's no, there's very little protection under the law for the provider and for the recipient. So, you know, just trying to get, there's a lot of licensed people that are good out there. It's just, just keep looking for one and I'm sure you'll find somebody who's good. One more question. Somebody wants to know, Alex, are you doing in-person or virtual consultations? We're doing both. So if you feel more comfortable doing the initial consultation, um, on Zoom, we can kind of start the conversation. We ask that you send some pictures in of the place to be remodeled, and we can have a virtual uh, Zoom meeting, see if uh, we have a good fit. And uh, a lot of times people, uh, it, it's I don't like to just set up an appointment and go over to people's houses without doing a virtual meeting because I want to make sure that I can uh, help them, that, they're, that, we, that they need the services that we provide. So the best way to do that is by having a, a, maybe a 30-minute, 15-minute conversation about the project before we meet. And then if it looks like we're a good fit, we'll set up an appointment right away. Well, folks, this has been another episode of the Bay Cities Construction Show. If you want to learn more about construction for your project, uh, please check out our website, baycitiesconstruction.com. If you want to watch the replay on the hidden costs of remalling with um, our project manager, Casey MacArthur. Check it out. It's episode 50 on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Remember, folks, we put this amazing website together for you, for you to be informed, and make good decisions pertaining to your construction project. Visit our blog at baycitiesconstruction.com. Hit the uh, little blog button on the res- under the resource tab. There's hundreds of blog articles there to help you uh, educate you and we're coming out with a new article or a new video every week about a pertaining topic of construction services if you want to watch more if you're more of a visual learner than a, a reader please visit us on YouTube at Bay Cities Construction uh, learn more about home remodeling there's hundreds of videos there to help you and, it, and the, uh, the address is youtube.com forward slash Bay Cities Construction If you're ready to talk about your next project, we can set up an in-home consultation or a virtual consultation. And that's easy. Just give our our offices a call or send us an email. We've been doing business for a long time, folks. It's been 16 years and counting. And uh, we can provide a complete solution for you. We can do the interior design. We can do the architectural engineering, represent you with the city, manage the project, and deliver a beautiful new space. As we mentioned before, we have a beautiful little office here in Newport Beach. Look forward to service, servicing you in Orange County. We service from uh, Manhattan Beach all the way down to Dana Point. And again, Bay Cities Construction, here's our contact info. If you want to check out what people are saying about us, there's reviews posted on all the common social media channels, Yelp, House, Google, etc. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. That's the, the best way to get um, notifications when we have a new episode up and running. And again, thank you for watching. It's always fun making these videos. I hope that you find them entertaining and informative. And please make sure you comment and subscribe below. My name is Alex reminding you, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya. 
kitchen you want today from Bay Cities Construction in the Southern California and Los Angeles area. There is no better company who takes time out of the equation to get you a detailed plan of what your new kitchen will look like. Get your design plans done, your interior design plans done, an entire project scope done right now. Get your finished kitchen in 90 days or less. We are the best in the Los Angeles and Southern California area, and there's no need to shop anywhere else. Just get started with Bay Cities Construction. Go to baycitiesconstruction.com. That's baycitiesconstruction.com. My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract, you need a team of pros.